Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and if you haven't figured out what day of the week this probably went up, well, it's time for another Obscurity in Literature, and I feel like I've talked about this book so many times on this channel that, you know what, it's time to just finally put it on here, and I speak none other than one of my personal favorites, King City by Brandon Graham. Now, I've shown off just about every single Graham book that is not going to get me dinged by YouTube because he did do some very graphic uh, adult style books early on in his career and occasionally dabbles in that still. But to me, this is where he really made his mark. And uh, most of this, from my recollection, was all originally published by Tokyo Pop. But this book itself, this is a massive book, by the way, is actually through Image. And like it says, when I don't know if the price has changed, but when it came out, it was 400 pages for 20 bucks. And I was like, hell yeah. But I saw that cover, and being a forever canine person, uh, I, I just was like, eh, cats, you know? I mean, I, I guess. But, you know, there's a lot going on here, and that is absolutely intentional that there is the shadow like that. But what really got my attention was when I finally got a chance to see the back cover and there's just so much detail going on with everything Joe and Pete there uh, one of the things that I truly enjoyed about this and what really made me interested in Graham's work was just there's so much bizarreness all these weird puns and blurbs and just every the, the, the way things are written everywhere and there's just so much going on in the backgrounds i mean for a book titled king city and obviously you know king city is going to focus very heavily into this i really feel like for as much as we have this core group of characters that the story focuses around i mean the city really ends up being kind of the star because even from the get-go Early on in the book, I, I feel like Graham's work is a little bit more simplistic, a little bit more stylized, a little bit more in that kind of graffiti era than what it becomes later on. And I just, I like, love the inside covers here. The detail in the backgrounds. There is a very heavy manga and French comic artistry thing going on here and it's just like the bizarreness of the city the things that are in it the signage going on everywhere it just the density of what's going on the various gangs evildoers no gooders the whole korean zombie war that's going on because yeah that's a thing in this book and actually the PTSD that one of the main characters deals with drug usage which is bizarre and I mean even like from the get go this is fairly early on you know we, we start getting the weird detail and lists of just unique traits of people his fingers have no nails or prints two sets of eyelids, three rows of teeth his belly button has teeth his kneecaps have some kind of holes in them with acid sacks. The bizarre yet very detailed lists of what's going on with people. I saw this old sweet mother transform into a wereworm somewhere in here. All the various gangs of the city. Being a fan of classics like The Warriors, and to a slightly smaller degree, the gangs in New York and all of the, the gangs in their colorful attire, naming themselves. There's just a lot going on with his work. And then, as promised, there's all kinds of puzzles and games throughout the book, and considering you have a good 400 pages here. But you have the main character, Joe, who is a cat master, which is as bizarre as it sounds. The little blurbs about the Korean zombie war. <laughs> and how Max, you know, had to kill a 15-foot-tall, eight-armed zombie queen. 
and lost his leg in the battle. The Yes Men. And Joe learned how to be a cat master out on the cat farm. And every now and then we get some uh, interesting little interludes by other artists as well. The art looks really familiar. And the cats are quite interesting. So then you see a lot of later on in his work, we have like these detailed lists of inventories of everything going on. The toilet often plays into effect in his stories as well. I do really like his use of space and color, but in this case, basically, you know, black, white, and gray. I think some of the chapters seem to have a very bad, almost photocopy-like quality to the artwork, which is kind of surprising. Again, Joe has a habit of going to the bathroom throughout the book. In some ways, this kind of reminded me, and maybe it was just because I was reading it at the time, um, the Scott Pilgrim stuff. But again, that might just be... To me, I, I enjoyed this... I mean, not to say that Scott Pilgrim was bad in any way, but to me, this was much more of my kind of book. And as the story goes, and all the characters and various stories start to tie up. I found that pretty cool. In the back, we've got a bunch of short stories as well by various artists, including one of my favorites, good old Mr. James Stacco. Give it a bit of the background info on everything. And as always, with a Brandon Graham book, you're going to get all kinds of weird afterworld fun stuff like this. I, I just I love the density of how thickly packed these pages are with stuff. Here's some of the original Tokyo Pop covers, and then the image versions. Where was the board game? I don't even remember. You got all the characters for it. The clearance tag on it, too. I don't know, it just... I really don't want to get into the story too much, because it does eventually mesh together. The first time I read it, I thought it was very disjointed. You know, but this is an early artist coming into his own, and I think by the time you finish it, it really just meshed well with me. And I remember, you know, this has kind of followed me, and is kind of my litmus test for a lot of books that would come after it. The Wrenchies was another one that really hit me, in a similar style and presence. Um... I don't know, I've always been kind of bummed that a lot of his later works didn't really reference King City. I mean, even with a throwaway line, because considering how many bizarre throwaway lines there are in this, multiple warheads, rain like hammers, it totally could have fit in there, and it just could have been one big Brandon Graham universe of stuff. But, I mean, a lot of the storytelling techniques that he would eventually use in his profit run, you could see a lot of the beginnings of it here, and I really enjoyed it. It feels very personal you know, on a very down-to-earth, very street level, if you want to, you know, talk like the kids, but uh, it is, I mean, it is on the streets, and there is a very heavy sense of, you know, that street scene, you know, with all the various gangs, cliques, hustlers, movers, shakers, scenesters, it's all there, and as somebody that was always interested in that kind of culture, especially, you know, with the various subcultures that surround it, it really resonated well with me. So if you're looking for something different, I mean, I, I, this really fits the bill. It's unique. It definitely uh, has some various homages throughout it, but for the most part, I, I'd say this is a very interesting and original work that we don't see a lot of like this these days. And Tokyo Pop was really putting out some cool stuff at this time, like Shark Knife, James's Stucco's Wonton Soup, King City, Guy Davis's uh that was Oni, wasn't it? No, that wasn't Tokyo Pop. 
The others are Oni, too. I'm confusing my companies, obviously. Okay, that's a good sign for me that this day is coming to an end. I need to stop talking because I'm mixing up comic companies. Oni did put some of that stuff out. Tokyo Pop did put some of that stuff out as well. I'm going to have to go back and check my history. Anyway, if you're interested, do take a look on Amazon. You should be able to find a good, cheap copy. I don't even know how I ended up discovering this. This is one of those weird Amazon recommendations from way back when. And I mean, I'm, I'm talking... Shoot, what year was this even published? I should have checked that first thing. This is the first printing... 2012? At least 2012. Damn, it's like 10 years ago. Well, <laughs> it's been with me a while, what can I say? So, yeah, take a look at it if you haven't. Fun stuff to be had there. So with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.